Good morning, student. This is Rani Shukla, and today I'm going to explain the chapter Silk Road, and which has been narrated by Nick Middleton. Basically, the chapter is a travel log. So Nick Middleton is uh, talking about his travel experiences, and he has recorded his travel experiences in this chapter. Okay, so today I'm going to cover the five paragraphs. Silk Road basically is in the northern side of our country, India. and this road has been connected from india to the country of middle east asia china etc so it has been since ancient time even i can say since bc's we are nowadays in ed 80s since bc's it has been uh, the route for the business basically silk was the most uh, prominent commodity which was being transported from this area so silk route is basically the name which has which it gets now let's begin i'm going to cover the five paragraph of this chapter A flawless half moon floated in a perfect blue sky on the morning we said our goodbye so narrator is saying he is saying to goodbye to some people and the morning scene it is and the moon is quite neat and clean so flawless there is no flaw on the moon and it is floating in the sky I mean it's just uh, moving in the sky it is there in the sky in a emerged position and the sky is quite blue and perfectly blue looking its sky it is extended banks of the clouds like clouds like long french loaves glowed pink as the sun emerged to splash the distant mountain tops with a rose tinted blush so you can see sunrise is on the almost in the going and when the sun is rising the highlighted rays of the sun or the outlines of the sun uh, are reflecting over the mountain peaks and the clouds can also be seen having an outline of pinkish tint rose like pinkish tint and they are they are compared to long french loaves french loaves are the loaves of bread which are specifically french loaf are specific uh, loaves so has been compared the uh, the the you can say the design of the clouds have been compared to the loaves now that we were leaving ravu lamo said so lamo was a lady there who was a, a companion like there and who was actually giving them shelter so now that we were leaving ravu ravu is the name of a place actually basically the story is set in tibetan area so tibet mount kailash himalaya these are all the explanations which will be mentioning in the chapter so now that we were leaving ravu lamo the lady she says she wanted to give me a farewell so writer was given a farewell a farewell present so what was that farewell present i give you I tell you one evening I had told her so one of those evening when he was taking shelter with Lamo and with his companions so Daniel was also a man who was accompanied with our narrator Nick Middleton so through Daniel not directly he talked but Daniel he talked to Daniel he told to Daniel and Daniel told Lamo that I was heading towards Mount Kailash so he was going to Mount Kailash to complete the Kora Kora is round journey suppose you go to Kailash and then you make a round Uh, you surround it you take a round journey towards it so that is uh, kora and she had said that i ought to get some warmer clothes so lamo said that lamo had suggested to daniel and to me also that if you are going to complete your journey complete your kora to mount kailash so you need the warmer clothes after ducking ducking back means by bowing down you get into the tent as you know that tent the ceiling of a tent is not so high that you directly go in a standing mode so that's why i duck back into the tent so she actually dug back into the tent she emerged carrying one of the long sleeve sheep skin coats that all the men wore so she brought a kind of jacket which has been made up of sheep skin and long sleeves were there so she took out that coat zetan was my driver he sized me up as we clambered into the car so sized me up he made me wore made me wear that particular dress and uh, and i was that time so zetan was my driver he sized me up mean he made me wear that as we clambered into his car so when we were getting into the car because it's a time for the departure of mine oh yes he declared drogba so he said to me oh you are looking like a drogba drogba are the local people who are called drogba there so he's actually my look was looking like a drogba Finally we started in our car. Zetan was my driver and Daniel is my companion and me alone. So we three are there in beginning. We took a shortcut to get off the Chatang, Chatang or Chengtang. These are the local terms there in Tibet area. So we took a shortcut to get off the Chengtang. So you can say Chatang was a place where we were at the time of the beginning and now we were leaving from. Zetan knew a route that would take us southwest. So Zetan the driver, he was an expert local driver and he would he would know a lot of a multiple routes. So he was taking us to southwest through a shortcut almost directly toward Mount Kailash. So he was saying to me that 
he knew a kind of way which uh, which could directly lead me to mount kailash it involved crossing several fairly high mountains but the route was not very easy kick so i had to or we had to cover a lot of high mountain passes you know passes are the loopholes in the mountain through 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 them uh, a traveler get into from some to some other place but no problem sir so the zetan was confident he assures me that there's no any issue i am there and i have an experience if there is no snow and further he adds if there will not be any kind of snow then it will be easy for me what was the likelihood i mean likelihood of that i so i asked what may be the possibility of the snow there not knowing sir until we get there so zetan replies me i'm not sure what will be the condition but let's begin and let's find out what will happen next from the gently rolling hills of ravu the shortcut took us across the vast open plains with nothing in them except a few gazelles so we were in beginning going uh, from ravu which was a place of rolling hills as i have told you i think in previous classes in offline classes i told you hills have a different kind of symmetrical asymmetrical patterns in their formation so rolling hill is a kind of category of hills the shortcut so we were going through the shortcut and that took us to the vast open plain so we were in an expansive area it was a ground like plain area with nothing in them except a few gazelles so in beginning we saw the gazelles gazelles are the stags or you can see hay, you can see deer so gazelles were there you can see there is a sketch of mount kailash it's a you can see the peak and you can see uh, there is a space surrounding in that that food look up from nibbling the arid pastures so you know gazelles were there and they were just nibbling or grazing the arid means the pasture which were having sometimes some specks of uh, dry grass and so on and frown they were frowning mean they were just uh, raising their eyebrows in their expression they were looking over us bounding away into the void and bounding away means we are getting into the void void mean in the space area further on where the plains become more stony than grassy finally we started to hit and we were getting the plains which were more stone than grass a great herd of wild us came into view then we saw the wild asses asses as we all know that so into view zetan told us we were approaching them long before they appeared zetan the driver already had a lot of experience so he said to me they are much closer what they are seen actually kyang he said then he said an expression which was a tibetan term he says kyang pointing towards a far off pall of dust so you know he says pall of dust means you can say a layer of dust uh, a curtain of dust when we drew near i could see the herd galloping en masse and when i uh, when we closed down the gazelles we were seeing then they were galloping is a motion of moving or movement of en masse mean in a in a proper gathering of formation so all the gazelles were, were were jumping and they were moving wheeling and turning in tight formation as if they were practicing maneuvers so they were just moving to and fro making twisting and making turns in front of our vehicle on some predetermined course as if they were already decided in their course plumes of dust billowed into the crisp clean air and the dust dust plumes means the clouds of the dust could be seen they were blow, blowing blowing means just coming into the crisp i mean very dry very clean air so now here ends today's session and i would like you to patience have patience when you are studying this any doubts send me your feedback thank you very much send me your doubts send me your feedback in my personal inbox thank you very much take care all the best for today